All right, so this is another session of basically this idea of exploring what is art now and what can it be or what could it be. And for me, I'm, I'm finding some, uh, some good energy in the idea of asking questions rather than making pronouncements. And that's an idea that I got from the foreword of the book Silence by John Cage. Um, however, I can't go full on into John Cage's uh, cosmos. I don't think that's the only cosmos, certainly. But it has been an influential one, and I've found it to be very generative and um, has a lot to offer us, as does, you know, the teachings of the Buddha and um, a lot of other different types of philosophies and ways of thinking and so forth. Um, my interest in making art that these videos are a kind of art and um, in this sense um, the art is an ongoing thing right it's it's that that river analogy that you can't step into the same river twice and it's always changing it's always flowing and in a sense when I make these videos it's different from like a live experience when I talk to someone in person and I can make eye-to-eye -eye contact with that person and feel the life energy between us or a couple of people in a roundtable discussion that's when um, I feel like you're able to really share the life energy and the vitality um, as art and I want to say also that I just started in on a, a second book and the main idea is that art it, it's considering art as awareness and I think that understanding is so vital because it's again the idea of if it's if it's the way that uh, art and life have come together over the past century and all of these actions in galleries and different and around town towns throughout um, the West and and beyond have been about kind of bringing together art and life my work and, and what I try and do is explore so what does that mean and what do we actually do if that's the case if art is life is it just okay art is life and then and then what and that's this that's the the instance here is that with these videos in one way it's a way for me to get outside of my own head but it's more than journaling because I really see the potential for honest and sincere engagement um, with not just comments through the videos but also then um, live interactions where you know I get a chance to talk with people in person around town right now and possibly in the future in other instances where roundtables are set up or uh, some conversational kind of uh, paradigm um, is promoted to kind of uh, help these ideas come to light. My big thing has always been that for as good as artist talks are, for example, or any talk that takes place on a stage with an audience and so forth, it's just so one way, right? It's like it's like a television is compared to like a computer these days. With the TV, for years, it was just a one-way feed, right? You just got the information from the TV. You couldn't say anything back to the TV. I mean, you could sit in your living room and say things, but it wasn't actually going through and reaching anyone. Um, and that's kind of what someone on a stage when they're giving their talk. Now we do have Q and A and that kind of opens up a little bit, right? You get maybe one question and, and maybe to expound a little bit on that, but it's not an exchange. It's not a conversation, right? And I'm just not seeing as many of these types of conversations where there are opportunities for folks to come and voice their opinions. Now, and not just their opinions, but their feelings, their thoughts, their philosophies, their take, uh, their stake in the in the whole uh, realm of of life itself, you know. And I know that sometimes there are town hall meetings and and so forth. This this conception that I have is much more as as an artistic venture, 
um, that you can talk about, I guess, life in general. It could go in a lot of different ways, but um, essentially that would be the idea that you have more of a conversation-based situation. And in my readings over the years, there have been lots of people in the past who have done lectures and so forth. And as inviting as that is, and, you know, I already have done a TEDx talk, and I, I may do a TED talk one day um, if that's in the cards, um, and maybe other talks as well. It's, it's, again, it's not the idea of saying that those talks aren't valuable. Just as with the galleries and museums as places of exhibitions and the nature of exhibitions, very valuable, very valuable. It's just that it's a way of thinking differently um, and exploring some new terrain and getting out of uh, the kind of matrix of convention that I think are really limiting um, our ability to to really imagine and and do some amazing things. And you know, that's just in my own world right now, mean my world meaning my local experience, I just want to be, having more uh, opportunities to meet with people and talk about at this point I'm interested in art as life but I you know I don't expect to to have that be the only idea of what art is or what it can be um I'm still interested in exploring that and as and as much as I've learned from John Cage's take on um just allowing things to happen basically and the idea of asking questions over pronouncements I do still think it's really sincerely an important part of life to articulate and to communicate and have a voice for yourself. You know, you can try and get beyond ego and so forth. I don't think that's supposed to negate self, that we should still have development of self and of individuality in a balance with, you know, social considerations and, you know, the idea of being in a community and so forth. So it's really about finding the balance. And I think perhaps, you know, that's what talks with Q&As try and do, but I'm looking for something that's even a little bit more balanced in my, in my estimation at this point, being something like maybe a half an hour of um, concerted uh, topic-centered uh, oration um, which might be on my part to, to begin the conversation, and then another half an hour of just pure conversation and just talking. And what this does necessitate is having folks involved who are looking to be engaged and to participate. And um, that I don't think that's, that's up to the people coming to, to you know, if, if you want to play a sport, when you come to play, you're, you know, you're going to be on the field. You know, there might be some people watching and so forth, but it's more than just a one person show. In other words, it's going to be where you get outside of your own head and you exchange ideas and you hear other perspectives from other people and you really get to explore, you know, in context, what do you think and what, do, what are your views? And then what are the views of some other people? People living in your area, or if this happens to be online at some point, then just, you know, people living out there in the world. But you get a sense of, you can kind of look at your own philosophy or perspective in context with other people's views. And you can get some of that from reading and so forth. And sometimes that's all you have. I mean, I've not seen anything like this uh, come up in my, in my local experience. Um, so I'm hoping to really do something where this art and art as awareness is something that you can practice with conversation with other people. And I think, in a sense, the ideas of meditation come into play as well in terms of awareness being the essence of meditation. And if art it could be the craft of life, is what I've been saying, is what I'm kind of exploring, then awareness itself is art. And that really joins this combination of of um, tuning into the world and being aware of what's going on around you, but also within you, and just savoring life uh, all the more for for that. So, um, well, that's all for now, and um, I'd like to do more of these. <laughs>